Well, uh, good morning, everybody, um, and thanks for coming. Um, I think I know most of you, but uh, for those I don't know, I'm Chris Wood, and I'm the general manager here at the airport. Um, again, really appreciative of you all coming for this uh, important day and important announcement. I just want to uh, recognize some, some people in the room, um, the elected officials, of course, from the cities and our townships, the region, uh, the province and the federal government. So everyone's represented here, and I think uh, Chair Sealing is going to uh, introduce and bring some greetings on their behalf. Uh, our airport tenants, um, it's interesting, we have uh, hangar number one represented here, uh, the first hangar at the airport, and also hangar number 53, which is our most recent tenant, so th and everybody in between. So thank you all for coming. Uh, we have airline people, we have uh, ground handling companies and other tenants. Uh, members of our Airport Business Advisory Committee, our airport staff, um, uh, the pilots, general aviation community. We have uh, management staff from the cities, the townships, and the region. We have officials from uh, MMM Group and uh, Macmillan Architects, the designer of the building. Um, and there's even an, a former airport manager here today, uh, someone who's forgotten. Actually, sorry, there's a couple airport managers here today. Um, Someone who's forgotten more than I know about airports, a uh, great friend and a mentor to me, Alex, thanks for being here. Uh, the president of the Canadian Airports Council as well, Daniel, thanks for coming this morning from Ottawa. And uh, of course, uh, normally we get, airport managers get nervous when Transport Canada comes uh, to show up, but we're really honored today to have um, both Michael and uh, Minister Raitt here. Um, we, have, we really have a great relationship with Transfer Canada, we're really proud of that, and uh, it's going to continue. I'd also like to extend uh, a sincere welcome to, um, I guess, what's being billed as the most recent satellite campus of Georgian College. Um, we have 50 aviation management students here today, and there will be a class going on actually here in this building this afternoon on airport planning. So we thought it was a great opportunity to invite them here today to, to get out of the classroom, see an airport, and actually get to attend this event with some people that may be able to hire you in the future. Um, and also rub elbows with the Minister of Transport, so that's pretty cool. Um, I know 20 years ago when I was a student at Georgian College, I got to go to an ICAO event in Montreal and have lunch with the Minister of Transport, and that's really stuck with me to this day. So. I'm glad you're here and taking advantage of this opportunity. So the program this morning, we're going to do a few short speeches from some, uh, some people here to my right. Um, we're going to do an unveiling of the, uh, of the building, and we're going to do a groundbreaking ceremony out, outside to the right. There will be availability for photos and interviews after, uh, after the event. So first, I'd like to uh, invite uh, the chair of the region of Waterloo, uh, Mr. Ken Sealing to uh, come up and say a few words. Ken. Well, thank you, Chris, and uh, welcome, Lisa. It's great to have you here. Uh, you, you can, for those of you who know me, you know that uh, the, the scale of importance of things is whether I wear a tie or not. And so I actually put a tie on for this morning, <laughs> just for you <laughs> and for the announcement. I'd like to uh, welcome some of the elected people that are here, and I hope I don't miss anybody. Um, and in, in no particular order, uh, Tom Galloway, who's the chair of Planning and Works, is sitting back here from the region. Um, uh, Zig Janek, who's the acting mayor of Kitchener, is in the front row here, which is our, just to the, to, to the uh, west of us here. Um, Larry Shantz and Murray Martin are here from Woolwich. Where am I looking? Right over here, and sitting in the corner. And, um, uh, Harold Albrecht, it's going up front. You're going to hear from Harold a little bit, uh, our member, and also Stephen Woodward in the front row here. And I see that Mike Harris is here. He's going to the LPGA, and how do I know he's going to the LPGA? Because he's dressed in red because, it, because it's uh, St. Mary's Heart Day at the LPGA, so that's why he's in red. My red shirt's waiting in the car. <laughs> and I just noticed Angela V slipped in behind from the city of Waterloo. Welcome. Have I missed any of the elected people that are here? And uh, Rob Horn, who's our commissioner, uh, uh, under whose jurisdiction this, this falls out here. 
Uh, we're very proud of our airport here. Uh, over the years, Regional Council has invested considerable uh, in, into the airport because it recognizes that it's an important part of the regional economy. It's just not a place for flying clubs. It's just not a place for one thing or other. We see it, it fulfills a broad need, whether it's economic development, whether it supports industry outside the airport or, or within the airport property, uh, passenger service. It's a convenience to our community and an important part. I often say there are sort of three legs to our, our transportation system here. There's the road system, there's the public transit system, and there's the airport here, and we think they're all vitally important. And so when investments are made by the federal government in this, I think it's a recognition that they too see this as important to our community. I don't want to steal anything from the announcement other than to say thank you. And uh, I think I'm, I'm supposed to introduce Rudy Keller from NAV Canada, whose project this really is and under uh, whose jurisdiction this falls. So I'd invite Rudy to come to the microphone. Thank you, Rudy. Actually, I'll just say a few words about NAVCAN, uh, if you don't mind. Thank you, Ken, very much, and uh, thanks for your leadership over all the years to, to make this airport into what it is today. So the reason we're all here today, so this is the busiest general aviation airport in Ontario. And actually, I just had a, a conversation with the, uh, the new tower supervisor, told me in the last two days we've had 1,500 movements here at this airport. Just to put that in context, uh, I think Pearson does about 1,100 in one day. Um, so we did 1,500 in two days, so not too bad. Um, we, are, we have one of the busiest flying schools in the country here. And on any given day at this airport, you can see a massive amount of fixed wing flight training, helicopters. We have private Eastern European military fighters based here. We have a large number of corporate jets. We have a flying uh, replica Spitfire based here, a Tiger Moth, aerobatic schools, we have gliders everywhere. Um, we have, um, uh, now we have a gyrocopter school, uh, and believe it or not, we now have an unmanned aerial vehicle school. Um, we also have Boeing 737s that are based here and an increasing amount of scheduled traffic. And there's one agency that's responsible to ensure that all of these pilots come and go safely every day. Um, and that, that agency, of course, is NAV Canada. Um, the airspace, uh, or sorry, the amazing controllers here do this important job seamlessly um, be within and beside the busiest airspace in the country. They make it look simple. Uh, I am not sure that there is a more diverse airport in the country. Uh, NAV Canada staff does this every day with the utmost professionalism and the highest regard for safety and in my opinion are the world's most respected ANS provider. And they all do this from a 45 year old building just over that way, but not anymore. So ladies and gentlemen here to tell us about an exciting new addition to our airport is Mr. Rudy Keller. He's the Executive Vice President of Service Delivery for NAV Canada. Rudy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So on behalf of NAV Canada, I'd like to welcome you, uh, welcome you to the uh, Waterloo International Airport ground breaking ceremony of our new air traffic control tower. And I also would like to uh, extend a special thank you to the Minister of Transport, the Honourable uh, Lisa Raitt, for being here today. It uh, means a lot to us and our team. Um, and representatives from uh, the Canadian Air Traffic Controllers Association. Our, our president, uh, their president, Peter Duffy, has joined us here. And as you can see, Chris has organized a pretty nice day here uh, on Friday. Thanks very much, Chris. And there's golf nearby, and uh, we should be able to enjoy a, a good day going into the weekend. Today's groundbreaking ceremony is, uh, is to mark the upcoming construction of the NAV Canada Air Traffic Control Tower. We're pleased to be able to announce uh, the renewal of our investment in support of aviation activity uh, at the regional region of Waterloo International Airport uh, and to provide a modern workplace for our employees. Um, the, uh, you've heard the numbers, I think Chris might have touched on it. Uh, at Waterloo here we handle uh, well over 100,000 movements each year and it is uh, one of the busiest uh, air traffic control facilities in Ontario. Uh, the, our controllers here at Waterloo manage a complex mix of traffic, varying speeds and type, which includes um, busy training school activity with four to five in the circuit. At the same time, uh, we have a, a mix of corporate general aviation, 
and commercial aviation. Some of this is with very well experienced pilot, pilots and some of it is with uh, our future aviators in commercial aviation student pilots. Unfortunately, um, uh, two of our uh, key members of our team here um, aren't going to be here, uh, around to see the uh, final, well they'll be around to see the final, but they won't be working in the, the new tower. Um, and these are key members of the Waterloo team that have contributed to our success in, in many years gone by. And that's John Terpstra, who's had an outstanding career, and uh, Randy Brown, who's been our sort of first class unit operations specialist here for some time, for years. Um, and uh, we're going to miss Randy, but we're going to make sure Randy and John are, are always welcome for coffee um, as they're coming on and off the golf course or whatever they choose to do. So the new tower uh, will replace uh, the existing tower, uh, as re referred to by Chris, built in 1969. Work is set to begin later this month, and we anticipate it will be complete uh, by, next, or by the summer of 2017. The new tower is uh, five meters taller than we have today, um, and a total of four stories in all. The added height will improve our controller's sight lines to all airport runways and taxiways and aprons. And you'll also notice when we walk out for the groundbreaking uh, part that the new tower is in a different location. When the current tower was first built, it was situated near the center of the airport at that time. Since then, runway uh, 0826 has been extended a further 3,300 feet uh, for various good reasons, which puts the center well east of the current tower. The new location factors in uh, the environment today and the airport setup. The tower cab where our controllers uh, will do their work will be much larger with a full 360 degree view of the airfield. There will be a new uh, ergonomically designed set of consoles complete with the advanced technology, uh, much of it which is built and designed right here in Canada and distributed worldwide by our own engineers and controllers working together. The renewal of, uh, of our Nav Canada infrastructure at Waterloo will ensure that we continue to be responsive to our customers' needs and to provide a safe and efficient air traffic control service now and well into the future. The aviation industry plays an essential role in our country, from the remote communities where air service is a critical lifeline to larger airports, uh, which play a significant role in the economy, moving passengers and cargo across Canada internationally much of which is what you see right here in Waterloo. And the region of Waterloo International Airport plays an equally important role to us. I know you are all looking forward uh, towards a bright future in aviation in this region, um, and we are pleased to be part of that future with the construction of this new tower. And I think that's evident when we see the youth uh, and the future around this region in aviation, and whether it's in our control facility or whether it's in airport planning, or the mini circuits we see going around here uh, with student pilots. So on that note, I want to thank you and we look forward to a long, successful relationship with uh, Chris and his team. And I must say, uh, for the last several years, uh, Chris, Trevor, and uh, John and the team have fostered an excellent relationship between Nav Canada, airports, and the aviation community. And that's key as we work across the country. And it uh, works no better than right here in Waterloo. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. That was uh, great. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce a, a great friend of the airport and a, a former frequent uh, traveler. I used to see him every Monday morning and every Thursday night. Um, Harold Albrecht, thank you. our MP. Well, thank you. And I, I have the honor of introducing my colleague, Lisa Wright. And I just want to assure her that I'm going to try to behave so she won't need to lead me away from the podium before my announcement is over today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here today to be part of this uh, great announcement this morning. This announcement is great news for the region of Waterloo, for the airport, for all of Kitchener-Waterloo, and indeed for the area well beyond the Kitchener-Waterloo area. I'm pleased to be joined today by my colleague Stephen Woodworth, Member of Parliament for Kitchener Centre, and my provincial counterpart Michael Harris, MPP, for the same riding that I have the honour to represent, Kitchener-Conestoga, which is where you're sitting today, which happens to be the best riding in all of Canada. 
I'm, I'm, ex I'm particularly pleased to see our Georgian student residents had an opportunity to chat with a few of them earlier today. And uh, with these bright people here, uh, men and women, I, I think our country is in great hands as it relates to the future of aviation. It's my sincere honor to introduce to you this morning my friend and colleague, the Honorable Lisa Raitt, Minister of Transport, who is here to make a key announcement that will make a big difference, not only for this airport, but for our entire region. Minister Raitt has served as Member of Parliament for seven years, and previous to her current role as Minister of Transport, she served as Minister of Natural Resources and Minister of Labor. Prior to her election to the House of Commons, Lisa was President and CEO of the Toronto Port Authority, and had previously served as the Port Authority's Council and Harbour Master. Lisa is a graduate of St. Francis Xavier University, holds a Master of Science degree from the University of Guelph, and she earned her, earned her law degree from Osgoode Hall at York University, and as a lawyer, she specialized in the areas of intellectual property, commercial litigation, and shipping arbitration. I've known Lisa since she was first elected to the House of Commons in 2008, and I've seen her do an admirable job in each of the portfolios she's held. She's very uh, knowledgeable in her portfolios, and if you don't believe that, you want to sit that, have her sitting down with a group of people from CN or CP or any of these large corporations, and she knows her stuff, I'm telling you. But beyond that, I've found her to be a very approachable person. Uh, on any file that I've had issues with, I can approach her in the lobby of the House of Commons, I can write her a personal email and be assured that I will get a prompt response, respectful response, and even when I need it a little bit of a say, okay, you don't quite understand that one, and I appreciate that very much. <laughs> so Lisa, welcome to Waterloo Region, the Kitchener Conestoga, it's great to have you here. Hi everybody. It's very good to be here, Harold, thank you for making sure that nobody forgets what I'm really famous for, which is helping Liz May. But it's funny, what's funny about that, if you notice, um, it's only the women in the audience that laughed out loud when Harold said that, because we've all had those girlfriends who go on a little bit too long that you wish you could give them the yank, and I know that you were all with me in spirit when I took one for the team, as it were. Um, but it's also nice to hear women's voices in an aviation facility, I have to say. It's, uh, it's moving along very well, in my opinion, in terms of getting more women involved in the aviation sector because these are great jobs. And I hope it continues down that path, and certainly we're trying to do everything we can to encourage it. Uh, merci beaucoup pour cette présentation. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good to see you, Stephen. Good to see you, Michael, although you are really underdressed for today, I have to admit. But that's okay. I understand you're doing something better, and that's, uh, I'm envious of you on that. My instruction today was not to wear heels, and I complied with it because there's walking involved as well, too. As Harold mentioned, I was the uh, CEO. This uh, podium keeps getting away from me. I was CEO of the Toronto Port Authority, which, of course, has Billy Bishop Airport, and that's where I met Alec Holm who I know was your manager here for a while. I think we overlapped by a year, maybe two years. Um, but what I can tell you is that I do know that Alec was the one that came up with the vision for the city center airport concept, put us in touch with London City Airport, put us in touch with what was happening at that time at Belfast as well too. So I wanna give a tip of the hat to you, Alex, because you did really start us off on a path which culminated with Porter and Billy Bishop to city center airport, although we've had several name changes along the way. Some of us will always know it as the Toronto Island Airport, um, but uh, I want to thank you and commend you for what you've done here in Waterloo is what you started at the airport in downtown Toronto, of which I was part of and I'm very grateful as well too. But today I'm here to talk about NAV Canada and to congratulate them actually for launching construction of this new air traffic control tower and for inviting me to be part of the groundbreaking here. Lots of nice words were, talked, were said about NAV Canada, and it's very true. We're very fortunate to have an agency like NAV Canada, and we're actually renowned around the world for this. In fact, I have taken meetings, or my department has taken a meeting, and I've taken a separate meeting, from delegations from both Germany and the United States wanting to know how we started NAV Canada from the government spin-off and how they continue to operate today. And the reason why they come to Canada to ask these questions is because it's working. They're doing a fantastic job. They're winning industrial awards for both safety and efficiency. It's internationally recognized for its expertise, for its innovative technology in air transportation, navigation, and simply because they get things done. Now, sometimes we do have a discussion about how quickly we move on certain items regarding flight paths, et cetera. That being said, we're very proud of what NAV Canada does. 
Le, le Canada est un vaste pays avec plusieurs personnes en mouvement. L'aviation nous relie, nous rassemble en tant que pays et nous unit au reste du monde. Canada is a large country and there's many people on the move. But aviation connects us. It helps us to connect to each other as a nation and it helps us to link to the rest of the world. But it has to be safe as possible in Canada. And you know, Canada's record is one of the best in the world. Even as air travel has increased at our airports, the number of aviation accidents, I'll touch wood on that, has actually decreased. And that's a remarkable achievement and we should be very proud of it. But aviation continues to change, so we have to be able to move with the tides, and we have to think outside the aerodrome as well, too. So I'm glad, Chris, that you mentioned that you actually are getting into a new technology, because certainly at Transport Canada, we are working to address something that's not exactly new, but is rapidly expanding, and that's unmanned air vehicles, or UAVs. We recently launched at Transport Canada consultations on how to amend federal regulations that govern the use of UAVs. And this isn't about cracking down, this isn't about stifling, because we know that we are the best in the world when it comes to promoting that technology. And we want to continue to have that edge when it comes to UAV technology. Support the new sector and its business potential, but we have to keep people safe. And we have to make sure that they're safe, not only in the air, but on the ground as well too. I expect that our colleagues at NAV Canada, based upon what they've been witnessing around our airports, see the need to address UAVs as well, too. Now, Waterloo Airport is a regional operation, and these are really important to our country's transportation system. So the Government of Canada has a program called ACAP, Airport Capital Assistance Program. When I was at the Toronto City Centre Airport, we utilized ACAP. Though I do remember, Alec, there was a time that we bought a fire truck that didn't fit into our fire hall. That did happen. He's nodding. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a lot of fun to discover that one afterwards. Mike Stevenson may be laughing as well, too. But ACAP keeps regional airports and allows them to make the improvements that they need but may not be able to afford to do so. So what's happened here at Waterloo? Well, ACAP has contributed close to $7 million, actually, in a number of different projects. A new reporting system for runway conditions, new runway guard lights, rehabilitation of a runway and taxiway, and a replacement of a front end loader for the airport. These things are there to help maintain safe operations for passengers, for air crews, and for airport employees as well too. But of course, we, you know, we invest in all modes of transportation in all regions across Canada, and these things are paying off. You can see those things in our economic action plans. And those are the kinds of things that allow us to say, forcefully, that we have one of the best economic performances and job creation records in the G7. But I believe that our success really is rooted in the fact that we have a great transportation system. Air transportation continues to contribute to our country, it continues to contribute to our economy, but in doing so, it has to be safe and secure, it has to be efficient and environmentally responsibility. And a project like there's talking about today here with NAV Canada is one of these kinds of projects. The system will continue to grow, will continue to create jobs for the fine students at Georgian College, will continue to support communities like the Waterloo Region community around here. So I'm really pleased that I was asked to be here today. And I ha it's not part of my itinerary, but I'm going to ask Chris if I can get a tour of the, where are you? There you are. Ask if I can get a tour of the, of the, the other side of the operations maybe later on today or another time when you're not so busy. It'd be awesome to come back to see how your airport operates. And now that I see you go to Chicago nonstop daily, well, that changes the whole game plan. I'm only 31 minutes away from here, so it's a heck of a lot better than going the other way through traffic to Pearson. So thank you very much for having me here today, and I look forward to, to uh, taking part in the groundbreaking later on. I guess when the Minister of Transport asks you for a tour, you, you don't really hesitate. And, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, so uh, I just want to give you a few facts, and I think we have some promotional material around, but I'm really proud of this airport, and, and uh, we're doing a lot of great things here. Top 20th busiest airport in the country consistently. 250 based airplanes here. I, I'm pretty sure we're bursting at the seams, and there's not too much availability. Uh, as was mentioned, over 100,000 movements every year. We contribute $86 million to the economy, the regional economy here in, uh, in the region of Waterloo. And over 300 people come to work here every day at this airport. 
Um, we have over 25 businesses and that continues to grow. So we're really proud of this airport. We want to really thank NAVCAN for the investment and the confidence they're showing in the airport. Um, I believe now we're going to do some photos. Um, so Sandra is going to, the, the real boss is going to take care of everything and organize us all for some photos. Then we're going to go out that back door and we're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony. Um, again, more photos and, um, and, that, and the un, of course the unveiling. You all want to see what it's going to look like, right? So, Sandra, uh, oh, uh, sorry, yes, I uh, mentioned uh, uh, Mayor Les Armstrong and Wayne Wetlaw for our uh, regional councillor also joined us, so thank you very much for being here. That's good, that's good. One, two, three. I have four times. Thank you. Oh, three. So then, uh, and if we can get um, oh. an hour. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, everybody, one, two, three. That was good. Nice.